Wow. Well, it was 2020, weren't it? Like just as the beginning of the um, COVID yeah. pandemic when I was working wow. on the front line. But uh, since then, I've kind of gone to the back line, still working medicine, but you've kind of gone very much to the front line of when it comes to watches and uh, jewelry, Charles. So tell yeah. me about that. It's been really interesting. I've been following you, like I said, for a while now and I uh, got in recontact over Twitter when yeah. I was, uh, when I was uh, you know, drooling over some of your watches. Um, so how did everything start with that? Because I know you came on The Apprentice. Yep. 2017, wasn't it? Uh, in 2017. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With uh, Michaela Bushra, quite a exactly. few guys, uh, Sergeant, exactly. quite a few guys uh, yep. in, in in that cohort. Some big characters. Yeah, and you kind of slipped on the radar. I, I remember watching you, and then you kind of made a career for yourself outside of the Apprentice. Yeah, I I I say this to people, and I don't mean this in a in a in a bad way, but you know, the what is it, 20 or so people that go on the show each year, the the candidates that are selected some are there for and i'd say more than not are there for entertainment value and to see where they can springboard from or to mm -hmm. um but for me it was uh i've always been entrepreneurial from for me a kid right um i was the archetypal selling sweets on a school bus guy age you know 11 mm -hmm. when i first started secondary school then that that then led me into like when live strong bands were a thing those yeah, yeah. yellow bands. ones the back in the day exactly, what exactly. about the same age aren't we this is like mid 2000s like 2005 or like Pro probably because i was born in 93 so plus 11 years yeah 2004 five something like yeah. that yeah and then uh then there was the nike racism band and then it became like power balance which was just kind of like so what happened was i just had funds from selling sweets and it just snowballed i was making like 100 pounds a week profit that time going to costco buying strawberry pencils and rainbow sticks and all these things and oreos also and um but that but it's funny because i kind of cut my teeth there because then you all some other kids were like oh this guy is doing something cool so then you have competition and then you've got they're offering different things different mm -hmm. prices and how can you you know compete so you know all this time i'm always like being entrepreneurial and friend and family are like oh you know you should um you should go on the apprentice or dragon's den and you're like ah like whatever yeah when yeah. it came to 2017 and uh it, it, i just was a bit i just finished a piece of work with the family business basically it was it was the brink collapse we saved it thankfully and that was good and then it was like what what do i do with myself and literally looked on facebook randomly and it said last day to apply and the rest is the rest got on the show um but i had no interest in, in being a business part of lord sugar and i'm not just saying that people that know me know that was that was true um mm -hmm. i just thought this is something interesting fun to do and that's that's what happened um went on the show and yeah I'm, I've, I've always had a very strong interest back to the watch front in yeah. in, in, in you know wrist watches mm -hmm. uh, in fact if i just i'll show you here so this this is one of the first it's one of the first like um swiss watches that i ever i ever got so if someone's not watching this and they're listening it's basically like a, a gucci black uh, i think it's probably pvd or something yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh yes yeah, so that was that was like one of the first that i bought uh -huh. um and i've just yes my family have been in in watching jewelry my grandfather was a watchmaker in the 1950s and right. then um you know we've had all sorts of stuff from uh cartier agencies amiga Breitling, mm -hmm. all the big names really um and Patek as well you've got some Pateks, right right so, so so now whether this is now is very different but like in terms of we used to be license like what they would call authorized stockists or right, authorized yeah, dealers yeah. now mm -hmm. of, of cartier breitling amiga tiso longine all these brands mm -hmm. and now we've got a very different business um but i've always had this interest in watches yeah. and um to, to be perfectly frank i I've, i hadn't done trading like i'm doing at the moment with mm -hmm. one marketplace um up until really 2017 mm -hmm. after the apprentice had actually aired yeah yeah because i'd finished this project with a family business which is pretty much just saving it from collapse mm -hmm. and i didn't really know where my life was going from there because that was a baptism of fire just two years of just do what you can to make sure this business is saved because yeah. the biggest problem was not only was it the livelihood of my father and my grandfather they also had what people in the 
commercial wall will understand is, is what's called a PG or a personal guarantee, which right. means that your house or both the houses were liable should the business fail which right. is a huge, okay. huge problem. Yeah, yeah. next right. on the line, essentially, isn't it? Everything's on the line. So um, I was working at Tesco at the time. I was in a buying capacity. It's a mm. whole different story, really cool uh, job. And it was like, I have to come back and save this no matter what. And I was only, I was 21 too. Like, you know, it just was what it was. Mm. Um, I won awards for saving the business. So in Watch Pro, which is like the preeminent title for Watch professionals in the uk on an award there for as the mm -hmm. retail time in 2015 so then the apprentice happened then you know there's the filming of it of course and then there's a lag until it gets aired yeah during yeah. that lag it's kind of confusing you're like what do i do i'm a bit mm. lost in things and then the watch thing creeped back in and i thought okay we'll start on the watch front again yeah. the problem was of course i had only one phone number at the time it's my personal number mm -hmm. so i would put that phone number on an advert for a cartier for argument's sake on and by the way at this point this is down 17 and no matter what i'm gonna tell you very few people were using social media to sell watches now you yeah. see it everywhere yeah. back yeah. then it, it, it wasn't even a thing like mm. you just didn't see it so there were so all of a sudden all these young kids thought it's really cool to call a guy from the apprentice directly and you know, talk nonsense. So most of my day was dealing with that kind of thing. Yeah. I, mean, I remember waking up at four in the morning, not not finishing till midnight. My wife at the time was going crazy and never see you, this, this, this. And it wasn't working. Truth, yeah. Truly, it was not working. And yes. whether it was because again, it was all these hoax calls I was getting, yeah. whether it was my energy was in the wrong place, I don't know. Or also now there's more um dealers than there were so that's kind of spread out more mm. whereas when there were fewer dealers you just got everything but yeah. now you get kind of um and then this is being just you know i'm very truthful and people will know this who see my burning issues or see yeah. everything that i do um i had then a really difficult battle from 2018 i'd say early 2018 to um basically the end of last year so 22 so a good four years of um just mental health like really mm -hmm. situation 